I am so happy today because I have a dear friend who is co-hosting with me today. You know her from the facts of life. You know her from Deadwood, Miss Jerry Jewell. Hi, David. I'm excited too. This is gonna be so cool. Oh, very cool. Very cool. We have um, Norman Lear. Yep. And Brent Miller. Brent Miller. Yep. And uh, when did you first meet Norman? In 1980 at the Media Access Awards. So we go way, way, way back. Way, way, way back. I actually think you knew each other from a past life. Probably. Probably. I, I met him in this life when I was 10. <laughs> <laughs> He has been around approximately forever. He is 92 years old. Ladies and gentlemen, Norman Lear. You know what I like about you, Archie? What's that, boy? Nothing. <laughs> Norman Lear has changed the face of television. And at least 120 million Americans watch Norman Lear shows every week. Oh, no, Sir Master Jefferson. You done showed me the way. Please. Television can be broken into two parts, before Norman and after Norman. This is a period of time where we were at our, probably our greatest change socially. Mainstream television was one of the last things to jump, and the first person to force it over that hill was Norman. All in the family was the greatest. Do you have a quick answer for the people who say uh, the show reinforces bigotry? Yes, very my beginning. quick answer is no. I never said a guy who wears glasses is a queer. A guy who wears glasses is a four eyes. A guy who is a fag is a queer. Who used to say is too hip for the room. There weren't any African-Americans on TV at that time, and I didn't want to disparage a black family. She's the fuse that sets off kid dynamite! There are lines that were meant for you to say because you were black. It's time for God's people to come out of the churches and change America! I was concerned about what I was seeing on television, mixing politics and religion. So I thought, I want to take the flag back for all of us. He called me and said, guess what? I own the Declaration of Independence. Laughter, it, you know, just has to add time. You know, if lifting weights or running, you know, can add time, God, how laughter can add time. <laughs> Remember, you heard it here. Guys like us, we had it made. Guys and here we are, and I'm so excited to introduce the legendary Norman Lear and the executive producer of One Day at a Time, Brent Miller, both my dear friends. Oh. Thank you both for being here. Uh, uh, and uh, my dear friend is uh, Jerry Jewell. Uh, one of the lovers of my life. Thank you so much. Well, I, you know, whenever I see the two of you together, it's, it really is family, the two of you. Yeah. I like that. We go way back. <laughs> way back. <laughs> so, Norman. How do you feel uh, being called a living legend? Uh, I don't really hear, hear it. You know, I mean, I, uh, I see it applied to dozens of people through the years that I think are horseshit. <laughs> uh, so to be among them is not, <laughs> is not the greatest thrill. <laughs> well, it's interesting because I used to take uh, classes uh, from Corey Allen, who is my dear friend, and he uh, says, do not call me a guru. So he told everybody that, so I understand. But I like the living part of it. Right? Yeah. 
I'll take that. I'll take that. Um, and Brent and Norman, how did you find each other? Go, Brent. <laughs> uh, you know, it's it's a it's somewhat of a long story, but I'll keep it short so not to lose any of our viewers. Wow. Um, the gist of it is, is that I was uh, working with an event planner. I had my own event company and um, she had cornered me on a Friday and said, uh, I'd like for you to commit the next six months working with me. And I said to her, I don't think I can. I enjoyed my schedule, but let me think about it. Over the weekend, I called her on a Sunday night and said, you know what? I'll give you the six months that you need. Monday morning, Norman called her and said, I'm turning 85, my wife's turning 60. We wanna celebrate 145 years of the Lears. And I need you to find someone to work just with me for the next six months. She said, I think I've got the perfect person. Tuesday morning, we met in his office in Beverly Hills and we've been together ever since. Wow. My, what my 85th turned out to be was uh, a, a party here at our house, here on our tennis court and then a party in uh, Mallorca, uh, Spain, the likes of which <laughs> only a Brent could, a Miller could produce. It started with, tell them Brent. Well, we had, you know, the, the LA party was first. We opened with Jennifer Hudson singing her big song that she did from Dreamgirls. And this is before she was the Jennifer Hudson that, that we all know now. And the party closed with Harry Belafonte. Uh, and in between was Buddy Guy and Molly Shannon and Barbara Cook. And we just had Chris Brown's dancers at the time before Chris Brown became someone we weren't so happy with. But it was, uh, it was a hell of a party. And then we followed that with Mallorca and, um, and found uh, an act that Norman um, loved. Uh, and, and continues to talk about and, and tried to bring, Norman himself tried to bring these guys to the States because no one had, had seen them. They haven't been exposed, but they, they are a juggling act. So listen to this, Julie, <laughs> David, two guys, <clears throat> great looking guys yeah. in suits and ties come out juggling. They each have three pins and they're going back and forth with each other. They never stop for a moment. And then they stop and dress as they continue juggling. And they go down to their shorts and, they, and reveal their beautiful bodies. And then they change clothes and put on the other guy's clothes. While they're oh, doing this? Never stopping the, uh, the uh, juggling. At Brands mm -hmm. Amazing act. Amazing act. Oh my God. Okay, Brent, you got to put on a birthday party for me. <laughs> <laughs> I'll send you a link to these guys. They're still doing their act in Germany. No kidding. Yeah, we can, we, I can find them on YouTube. Okay. Well, I know what I want for my 60th. <laughs> you know, Norman, I have a question for you. One of the most rewarding things of my whole career above everything else under the sun was when you cast me in I Love Liberty. I will never forget that for as long as I live. And I was seriously thinking about it last week and I was wondering if you could do it again, especially in these times and what's going on in America, could you do that again? The same thing we did in 82 with I Love Liberty? You know, I, I, I think about it all the time. It's an interesting question, Brent, to see if an, any network or, uh, you know, studio or whatever would have, they could take a look at the I Love Liberty and what if we did a today version of that? Sure. I mean, you know, I, 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 it, you're quite right, Julie. This is a, an amazing time to be thinking about doing that because there is so much, to, especially if you approach the, uh, uh, the election. Yeah, yeah. It'd be powerful. I'll never forget her in I Love Liberty because we had 
how many people did the stadium hold? What was that 25,000? 25,000. It was jammed. And, uh, and she got up there on a stage in the middle of 25,000 people and, and killed. She was fabulous. Uh, that's not the way it started, but that's the way it ended. Yes, that is very true. Now, Norman, I have a question for you. You know, I've known you for years, and it's no secret that you're my mentor, my dear friend, and in a lot of ways, a surrogate father. That's the way I've always looked at you. And you've always been there for me, but I have a question for you. You know, I'm going to be 64 this year. And, yeah, when I'm 64, will you still love me? <laughs> <laughs> but what I want to know is how do you keep your youth and your inspiration and your zest for life in your own life so that I can apply it when I'm 64? <laughs> Well, it, I think it's, I've often answered that question. Uh, and the first thing that occurs to me is, uh, I love getting up in the morning. Ah, okay. I, I mean, it is, it is a treat when I, as I think of it now, to sleep and wake up and holy shit, the whole world is there. And by the way, it wouldn't be there if I didn't open my eyes. Right. And I'm not talking about everything I see. It's everything I know is out there. You know, 50 states in this country, only one uh, country among, uh, you know, however many across the globe. And the reason it's there is because I woke up. So you have an inner joy that you wake up with and take it with you each day. Yes, what, what a gift. Hmm. How exciting. And I. Uh, oh. What was oh. that? I, I think, think it was the phone that turned. <laughs> I think it's a FaceTime call. It's a FaceTime call oh, with Norman. Got a good headshot there, Norman. Are you uh, good. I see. I should have turned this off. Oh, there's a daughter. That's a Maggie. You want to meet her? Oh, hi, Maggie. She's calling from uh, New York. <laughs> calling from New York, showing him what I really look like. All right. <laughs> well, no, no, no. Say hello. Say hello. Tell him who you are, Maggie. I'm Maggie. Yeah. Is that Brent? Daughter. Is that Brent? That's Brent hey. there. And that's Jerry. Remember Jerry Jewell? Yeah. And, Hi, and, and David, David Zimmerman. Hi, David Zimmerman. All right, nice. you wonderful people. I, I'm going to let you go. Do I'll you call you me? back later, darling girl. Nice to meet Bye. you. Hi, Maggie. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love your smile, Brent. Oh, Why Brent. not one of five daughters? <laughs> Would you mind me? I have a question for you, Brent. Yeah. Recently, I'd say in the last couple of years, you got your pilot license, correct? You know, I haven't completed my courses yet, but I'm, I'm halfway through. Well, I was blown away that you were going after that because I've always dreamt of flying. I mean, not a plane. Just <laughs> 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 flying with my wings. <laughs> But that always impressed me, and I was wondering, did you have that aspiration as a kid, or was that something that you wanted to do later in life, to learn how to fly? Uh, I did have it as a kid. Like you, you know, not just an airplane, I always wanted to fly, and I had dreams of flying when I was a kid. And, um, and then when I got old enough to realize it was a profession, uh, I wanted to pursue it, but I was told I couldn't because I had bad eyesight. And I was told that to be a professional pilot or a commercial pilot, you have to have 20-20 vision. And I got my first pair of glasses, I think, in second grade. Mm -hmm. So I did not decide to pursue that career, even though I was given really 
obviously the, the wrong information, or maybe it was right at that time, I'm not sure. But ultimately, I did uh, uh, want to fly. And my biological father uh, also flew. He was a pilot. And oh, wow. He, yeah, he flew uh, for the Marines. And um, so I think it was in my blood, and I, I enjoyed it. Oh, so. cool. I love that. Yeah, that is, it's, it's amazing when you go after your dreams. So I guess after the, um, um, after we're out of quarantine, you're going to go back to uh, getting your uh, license. Yeah, I think so. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm taking my time at the moment because I think my mom is a little uh, nervous. Uh, so I'm, I'm respecting her, uh, her fears. She's more afraid than I am. <laughs> right. Well, I, she's, wait, do we have the same mom? <laughs> <laughs> Um, uh, so Danny Woodburn, uh, from Seinfeld and many other famous shows, uh, wants to know, when are you going to remake All in the Family with him as Archie? <laughs> uh, day after tomorrow. <laughs> He's going to love that one. <laughs> By the way, you do have a beautiful daughter. She's in New York. Uh, that was Mag Maggie, yes. She's in New York, her sister. She has two sisters there, too. A, uh, a Kate and an Ellen. And you have five altogether? Uh, and, and then we I have twin daughters who are 25, yeah. One is in D.C. and the other is in Boston. Lovely, lovely. So we, we cover the countryside. Yeah, you're, you're planted everywhere. You're holding us down. Now... I have a question for Brent Miller from a dear friend of mine, Chris Hendrick, who you met, Norman Lear, in the Sedona World Wisdom Day conference. He plays the guitar. He has CP. And Chris wanted to know, and come to think of it, I want to know too, <laughs> what do you consider a successful pitch for a pilot? Uh, being sold. <laughs> <How do> you, <laughs> you gave me the answer before I could give it. <laughs> um, you know, I think it, it has to be brief, but full and exciting and uh, passionate and something that, you know, that, that especially in a Zoom session, that the people on the other side of their computer screen see see the passion behind it as you do so i mean we we've been fortunate enough to have some success during this quarantine and we we did sell a a show that will be announced soon and you know that 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 pitch was it was tight and and it was funny and it was engaging and it was something new and people were interested in that wow. mm. So I gotta keep on trucking, so do you, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> Norman, Norman, yeah. um, Matt Creeks, I went to high school with him and we still keep in touch. And uh, uh, I, I mentioned that we were having this interview and he said, uh, Nor for Norman Lear, you are thankfully so attuned to what's happening in all those days. You were so attuned. With the current events we are living through, does it spark your imaginations for a new series? And if so, what would it be called? Well, it, it does and it has, and it has it with Brent also. Uh, and we are, uh, I don't know what we can talk about Brent, but uh, we are certainly uh, looking at getting back into the studio to uh, work on a couple of shows. We we know we want to make and going to make. Can we say any more, Brent? Not really, unfortunately, but uh, we can say that we have, um, we, ha we have almost 12 projects that are set up in some form or another that will be, uh, once we get the green light to get back into production and be around each other, uh, we'll, be, we'll be moving and we'll be busy. Right. By the way, Brent, I want to thank you for coming to Performing Arts Studio West last year. Um, sure. It was, a, it was a memorable day and all the students, uh, they, I, I still remember all of them with you on that stage at the end. It was a, it was a great experience. Oh, it was just as great for me. Yeah, yeah. 
And Norman, you'll have to come one of these days once we get out of quarantine. <laughs> you got me, I'm yours. I, I, I like, uh, I like activity. Yeah. yeah. I like, uh, one of the, we talked about waking up in the morning. We're waking up with a lot of to-dos. Yeah. Uh, and I don't really have anything I have to do that I don't wish to do. Right. I'm very fortunate in that respect. And uh, I like it. Yeah. I, I love, you know, I love, I woke up this morning knowing I'm going to see Jerry. How terrible is that? <laughs> I, I love it. Visit. I have a question for you, Norman. In my yes. mind, you have always been a man of your word, wisdom, integrity. Just an incredible inspiration to me. And I was wondering if you ever had any aspirations to becoming president of the United States, and if not, why not? I'm sorry, did I ever have what? My, my question is, have you ever aspired to being president of the United States? And if president? Not, yeah, and if not, oh. why not? Uh, you know, a lot of years ago, I was, uh, there were a number of people who uh, were persistent and uh, wishing me to run for Congress or the Senate or something, wanted me to enter politics. And uh, so I had a long time to think about it. Well, I didn't really have a long time to think about it because I resisted it at every turn. <laughs> I had the time, but I resisted it. I, and people couldn't believe that I wouldn't think about it. Or uh, I remember a couple, I, you know, I would wish their permission to mention them, but I couldn't mention them, who just drove me nuts wanting me to run for the Congress or, Congress or something. Uh, I'm, I, I might not have met Brent if I had done that. Mm. And then look what the loss that would have been. For both of us. <laughs> In both directions. That's the way things work. This is, this is something amazing that I love. Just the, the, the magic that the, the two of you have for each other. The, it seems like a father-son family feeling between the two of you. More like brothers. Yeah. <laughs> I like that. I like that. <laughs> the way it feels to me. No, I, you know, it, it's, it's really a gift to be with people you admire, in addition to love. But, you know, you admire the way they handle things, do things. Uh, and uh, I, I only just met David. Uh, so I don't know David well enough to say, oh, God, how I admire him. But I'm looking at two other people that I've known for a great long time, and I couldn't admire them more, respect them more, look up to them more, uh, you know, wish to share more time. Yeah. Yeah. I understand. I've, I've been friends with Jerry now for over, I think, 12 years, is he? 12 years. And uh, she's, she's like a sister, uh, and she helps me breathe. Oh, that's lovely. That's lovely. Have you, do you work together at all? Yeah, we're do, doing a documentary, and uh, what else do we do together? Oh, we're not going to tell that on <laughs> <laughs> What's the, what's the uh, subject of the documentary? Uh, it's about a, um, a group of actors uh who uh who get together they might be a little different one is three foot tall one's uh blind one's deaf one have cerebral palsy one's me and uh it's about their families their mothers their brothers their lovers and the question that's asked is what do you want the most at this moment in your life and that was 10 years ago and now we're coming back 10 years later and asking the question did you get it oh that's that's really interesting 
Did you, did you get it, Jerry? Yep. Yep. Yeah. Good. I was a part of it then, and a lot of, well, a lot of life that's happened, I never expected. But some of the things that have happened in my life has come true. You know, I, at that time, I wanted to write a book about my life, and it happened. I did it. I mean, not magically, but I wrote it and got the got it published, and it's still in print 11 years later. It's incredible. Oh, that's wonderful. That's wonderful. And it's an audio book, which I listen to. Oh, oh yeah, thank you. Which I love. Yeah. I know. And can you believe they almost didn't have her do the audio book? It's crazy. It's like, yeah, it's like, you got to have her voice. It's her autobiography. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. Now I'm waiting for my book to become a movie. Who's going to play me? That's the problem. I'm going to play you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Corey Reader. Corey Reader uh, sent a question, He's, and this is for both of you. Ageism is a problem that faces many people in the entertainment industry. How do you deal with it? How do I deal with it? Yeah. I don't age. <laughs> Love it. Exactly. I just turn it down. I, I've had the opportunity to age, and I said, ah, screw it. No, I'm not going to do it. That's a, that's a perfect answer. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, behind the camera, we, we, we make, uh, you know, efforts to do what we can and, and use the platform that we've built to employ people who might be older or who might be uh, looked at that, you know, they're experiencing ageism issues. So we, we, we take that into consideration as we're meeting with people, whether it's writers or actors or whomever. I mean, I think you guys know we did a pilot uh, that Norman wrote with Peter Tolan called Guess Who Died? Yes. And uh, that whole cast was wonderful actors that are all over, you know, 70 years old. Yeah. And, um, and great, and, and maybe it didn't go for a variety of reasons, but it was still, and we're, and we're exploring a, another project that you'll, you'll hear about soon that is also dealing with people, the older demographic. Good, good, because I know that it, it, that just seemed like a perfect show, so I'm, I'm glad you know, something along the lines is moving forward. Yeah. Yeah. This is a question for both of you. Do you believe that Hollywood is in sync with people with disabilities in this country? Does it accurately portray what we've done with our lives and what has changed in this country for people with disabilities? <laughs> I, mean, I, 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 I think that's a tough question to answer because I think the obvious answer is, is no. Um, but I think there are some people that are, are making efforts to, to get better at that. Um, I mean, you would know better than I in, in your day-to-day -day communication with your team or your reps. And, and, and when you are getting the roles that you're getting, do you feel that it is being you know, their efforts to, to accurately portray various disabilities? I think we've improved, Grant. We've come a long way. But to this day, I'm never really considered for a role just for, like, a teacher, a doctor. Well, not a brain surgeon. That's kind of dangerous. But... <laughs> uh, is there any sound going down? I'm having difficulty hearing. Jerry, yes. are you? Am I what? Your sound is a little low. So Maybe you could get a little closer. You want me to get in closer? Is that close yes. enough? All right. <laughs> I think when we level the playing field and consider people with disabilities for all roles, like there's no reason why I couldn't be a teacher, a mother, a doctor, um, you know, a psychiatrist. Oh, I'd be a great psychiatrist. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you would. <laughs> She's been mine on occasion. <laughs> a lawyer, a lawyer. But 
unfortunately, for the most part, I'm only sent out for specific roles that have to do with disability. Mm. Yeah. I think you'd be a very good psychiatrist. Thank you. Would you come and see me? I'm going to do it right now. I have a problem. <laughs> right? We're all having group therapy right now. <laughs> uh, Barbara Rue sent in a question, and she said, how hands-on are Mr. Lear and Mr. Miller uh, in the casting of your projects? In casting, extremely hands-on. Totally, to, we are both totally involved in casting. Yay. Yeah. And Norman, how do you keep from being discouraged from being in this industry? Actually, for both of you. Uh, I know the first thing that occurs to me is I, uh, is I start being a member of the audience. You know, I... Basically, I love to be entertained. I love to be made to laugh or think or feel or uh, I couldn't, I couldn't, I don't enjoy anything more in life than being a member of the audience. Right. In every relationship, let alone every theatrical enterprise. What, what's the auspices of our conversation today? Well, we have a group of students uh, at Performing Arts Studio West, and we have over 100 students, uh, performers, actors, singers, dancers with disabilities. And uh -huh. uh, the Meet the Biz program, which I started over uh, 12 years ago, brought together actors and performers with disabilities with all actors. So it's all about inclusion. Um, and that's what this is about, people in the industry connecting and uh, uh, learning from each other. That's great. Are, are you, David, are you with a disability? Oh, in a way, I think we all have one uh, at a certain aspect. I, I wasn't, quote, born with one. Uh, I know, um, what is it, six days or seven days before my 50th birthday, I had a massive heart attack, um, which they said my aorta was 100% blocked. And, uh, but I'm still here. I'm knocking with you. Thank you. Um, but, you know, it's interesting. I just found, I, I started off being an actor. And, um, and then my dad got ill and I was with him toward the end and he passed. And I was emotionally burnt out as an actor. Uh -huh. And I was feeling at that time, I was saying my family starting to go, my aunts, my dad, and soon I won't have a family. And then I turned around because I was teaching classes and there was a knock. This is sort of like a way to describe it. I got an email from this wonderful, amazing woman named Jerry Jewell. And uh, she said, I heard you're having uh, an acting class uh, taught by Corey Allen. And um, can I come? So I opened the door of the night of the class and there was Jerry and I realized, ah, this is my family. Oh, that, I love that. That's a great story. Yeah. And I look at the four of you and aren't we family? <laughs> yeah, we are, huh? We are. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Jerry. I love you all. And I'm so glad we all had the time to do this. Thank you for making this possible, Brent and Norman. I didn't make it possible. I just joined you. Well, you made it. A blessing. Both of you, all of you are a blessing. Oh. Blessings to us all. What shall we say? One day at a time. One, one day at a time. <laughs>